I was looking at the free section of my favorite website when I found someone giving away a Honda lawnmower. The ad stated that it was not working and missing the gas cap. Now from the pictures included in the ad, it was very obvious that it needed a lot more work than just replacing the gas cap, but I'm always up for a good challenge. However, I was not prepared for the level of absolute carnage I was going to find. In today's video, we look at this Honda mower and the problem is that according to the person who gave it away, it doesn't start and it's missing a few parts. Now, I was having a hard time understanding what the pictures were showing, but when I picked it up, I realized that they had installed the handlebar upside down. So that was the first thing I corrected on this mower, but it's not going to be the last thing. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them. But if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. I never realized they had a name or a trademark for this style of handlebars, but I guess they did. The only thing I have to say about this handlebar design is that it's extremely comfortable to use while mowing. This is one of the reasons why I really like Honda mowers. The first thing I need to do is look over the mower and see if there are any serious issues I need to be aware of. And I hate to say it, but there's a lot going on here. The cover, gas cap, and the air filter are all missing. Now to replace the cover and filter, the cost would be around $13. And the gas cap is around $7, which isn't too expensive. However, it's unfortunate that we even have to replace it. Luckily, the aftermarket for this engine is rather large, so these parts are cheap and easy to find. The brake cable is not stuck and it's working very well, although it looks like the wires are showing around the anchor. The choke and throttle lever also seems to be working like it's supposed to, and I know it's hard to see, but the choke flap seems to be closing all the way, so we're off to a good start. Now, if these cables or levers need to be replaced, try and find the sticker on your mower where it shows the model and serial number. Then take that information to your local small engine shop, and they should be able to help you get the parts you need for a decent price. Of course, you can always look online, but you do run the risk of getting the wrong parts. Before I try and start this engine, I need to make sure there's a safe amount of oil in it. When checking your oil, remember to wipe the dipstick off first and then take your reading. Now on this Honda engine, the dipstick is only pressed against the filler neck and not threaded in. Now there is oil on the stick, it's just very low. Technically it's safe to run the engine for a test start, but if we were going to use this mower, I'd like to see it near the full mark. The biggest issue, believe it or not, are the bald wheels. This pretty much gives away just how much time this mower has been used, and it's been used quite a lot. But that's not the only issue. Just like so many of these Hondas, it has a problem where the rear wheels don't spin backwards. Unfortunately, the fix for this is not for the faint of heart. It would also take a couple of hours to fix, but our first goal is to make sure this engine even starts and runs before we look at the driveline. Like I said, the issues keep coming on this mower and we haven't even gotten to the good part yet. So on top of everything else, the recoil assembly isn't even bolted on, meaning someone took it off to look at it because the rope is broken, more than likely while they were pulling on it because it wouldn't start. I'm not sure why, but when mowers don't start, pulling on the rope harder is somehow going to make a difference, and sometimes you just end up breaking the rope. Now, there's no gasoline in the tank, so I'm not going to put any in there either. Instead, I want to put fuel into the carb's throat to see if it's going to start. If it does start, it means we have a working ignition system and more than enough compression to run. If it doesn't start, it means we either don't have spark or not enough compression. Luckily, it started and ran for a few seconds, which is great news, and even though it only ran for a short time, it sounded really good. No knocking or any other strange sounds, but what if it did? I would like to hear it run a little bit longer to try to diagnose it, so I'm going to try something I've never done before, which is to try to keep it running using propane from my torch. Well, that didn't work out very well at all, and I think it's because I can't run around the mower fast enough. So to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to try not only to run it, but also start it using propane. Now, I've been told this is really tricky to do, so hopefully I can at least get it started. Okay. 
while my dreams of running my mower with propane are very quickly dissipating just as fast as the gas from the cylinder. But I'm not going to give up just yet, and I'm going to continue this experiment later on. But right now, I'm going to quickly give this mower a cleaning, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to consider my plans for this mower. Surprisingly, the underside of this mower is in really good condition. There are a few spots that have some grass clippings stuck to it, but the rest of the deck is really clean, so I won't spend too much time on this part, and I'll mainly focus on the top part. Now I don't normally worry about the rear part of the mowing deck, but I'm glad I did because it's full of grass. If moisture was to collect in this area, I'd have to worry about rust, which you'll see here in a bit isn't going to be pretty and to be honest, really concerning. I don't know if a spot of rust would be enough to keep me from buying a mower, especially if it's a brand I really like, but it certainly made me think twice about buying it. So what are my plans for this mower? Well, to be honest, I'd really like to keep this one because of all the brands I find for free, the Hondas are the most likely ones I would keep. The biggest reason is the double blades and of course the engine. Now, I really like the way this mower cuts and mulches and I don't really care to bag the grass anymore and that's from years of bagging it from when I was a kid. The other reason why I want to keep it is because of the time and money I'm going to have to spend on this mower and I don't think I'll be able to get my money back out of it. The biggest time investment I'll have to make is the drive line and unfortunately after taking a better look at it, it looks like we also have a major issue with the deck as well. As you can see, there's a large hole in the side of the deck where the grass clippings collected near the plug for the chute, and unfortunately, it's not a small one either. That means I'll have to do some body work to fix this, which is something I've never had to do before. Things aren't looking very good so far for this fix, and I don't think it's going to get any better. The next thing I want to do is remove the airbox and the carb so we can inspect it. If the carb is usable and just needs a good cleaning, I think this will be a good mower to try and fix. However, if the carb is in terrible shape and needs replacing, it'll make my decision a lot tougher. I don't have an issue with using an aftermarket carb, but it just means I have to invest more money into the project that I might not get back. Now this is not a good sign. After taking off the bolt for the bowl, I can see it's covered in white deposits, which typically means this carb has had a lot of fuel dry up inside it for a very long period of time. Now after removing the bowl, it pretty much confirms that's exactly what happened. This is one of the worst situations for a carb, and I hate to say it, it's not the worst of it yet. Now, if you thought that was bad, the main body of the carb is in even worse condition. It has enough deposits on it that the float is not moving like it should, and that's because the needle is stuck in the passage it sits in. I hate to say it, but even with an ultrasonic cleaner, I don't think this is ever going to work again. Now, if you think I'm wrong, I'd like to see someone take a carb in this condition and put it in an ultrasonic and see if it gets it clean, and the most important part, makes it usable again. I have every faith that it will clean it, but the damage to the metal is what I'm worried about the most. Now I've got some hard decisions to make and I have to decide if this mower is even worth the time and money to get it working again. Just remember I have to get the self propel working again which is the reason why the wheels are locked up. Then I've got to replace the carb and the gas cap. The gas cap that's on there now is from a different engine. The recoil also needs to be restringed and on top of that I've got to fix a hole in the deck. As far as parts go the cost will be at a minimum of at least $40 not including the string for the pull rope or even new wheels and tires. The biggest issue is time. The carb, recoil, and rope aren't that bad, but the self-propel and the hole in the deck could be pushing well over 20 hours, filming time included of course. At this point, this repair has become a long-term project and I doubt I'll get the money back for the time I spend on it. Another option to try and fix this mower is to just transplant the engine to a deck with a working self-propel and that doesn't have a hole in it and some decent wheels and tires of course. So my question is, what do you think I should do with this mower? Try and fix all of its problems, transplant the engine to a different deck, or just use it for parts? To be honest, I'd really like to fix it, I just don't think it's a good economical decision. Thank you for watching, I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.